Hi guys, this is Bobby with bobbystamps.blogspot.com. I'm going to do a quick video today to show you how I make this cute card. Love the colors. It's purple and silver, and purple is my favorite color. I did a little bit of heat embossing on the tag, and then I used the metallic washi tape, and also the metallic thread is intertwined around the flowers. I don't know if you can see it there or not. When I first started making this card, I wasn't too crazy about it. I didn't think I was going to like the way the end result, but I absolutely love the way it turned out. Like I said, purple is my favorite color, so I really am thrilled the way that it turned out. I really end up, ended up liking it in the end, and that's what matters, right? I also wanted to take a few minutes to talk to you about our celebration, Stampin' Up! celebration. It's going to be ending March 31st, so if you're thinking about becoming a demonstrator, if you want to join Stampin' Up! just as a hobbyist to receive the 20% discount, that's fine too. You just have to make sure you do it before March 31st to get the great deal on the starter kit. Right now, if you, you pay $99 for your starter kit, you pick out all the things that you want in your starter kit. You get to choose everything. You spend $99, but you're actually going to get $156 in product. So that is a phenomenal deal. Make sure that you sign up before the end of the month. If you have any questions, you can give me an email, or you can also go to my blog. It's bobbystamps.blogspot.com, and I would be more than happy to answer any questions. I've been a demonstrator now, and I absolutely love it. I don't regret one minute the decision to sign up to be a demonstrator. I love stamping up products. I love card making. I like getting to meet new people, doing the workshops all that that entails. But like I said, if you just want to be a hobbyist, do it so you can um, uh, get supplies for your own use. That's fine too. And you'll receive a 20% discount on all the, the items that you purchase for your own use. So it's a win-win situation. So if you want to stay, see how I made this card, make sure you stay tuned guys. Thanks. Okay guys, I'm going to show you how I made this cute card. Let me give you an up close so you can see the shine on it. I used the washi tape and then I heat embossed the tag and then I've got a few jewels in the flowers and then I use the metallic thread at the bottom. So what we're gonna need to assemble a card is you're gonna need smoky slate, elegant eggplant, whisper white cardstock, you'll need a scrap of the elegant eggplant and you're gonna also need a scrap piece of green for your leaves and you can choose whatever whatever green that you want to use. I think this one is Old Olive that I ended up using. To cut out the leaves for the flowers, we're going to use the bot Botanical Builder Framelits. And then I used this, the little vine, to stamp it. You can see it on this one that I stamped when I used mine, and I just end up cutting those out with the Big Shot. Our sentiment is from First Sight. It's the Forever Friends. And then our background we did, I used the Timeless Texture. You're also going to need your heat tool and the silver powder embossing for the embossing. And you'll also need the metallic thread. The ink stamps we're going to use are ink pads, our basic gray, and elegant eggplant. And I'm going to show you real quick, this is how I ended up making the flowers. I don't know if you can see that very well. And it's a pretty neat technique. It's not very hard. It's not as complicated as it looks. But I will, this is the first thing we're going to do. So we'll get started on that. Okay. One of the things I want to tell you too before I get started is I'm just going to do a very small piece of paper since I already have this big piece already made. I don't want to waste my paper, so I'm just going to demonstrate it really quick on a small piece of paper. But you're also going to need a spritzer. You can use a water bottle if you don't have the Stampin' Up! spritzer. And then what I did was I just took a sheet protector and cut it in two. So that's all you're going to need for this is a sheet protector. And then you're also going to need the Stampin' Right markers, Basic Gray, Wisteria Wonder, and Elegant Eggplant. And I'm going to place a paper towel underneath my protective sheet just so you guys I think it might make the, the ink show up just a little bit better and I'm going since I'm using just a small piece of cardstock I'm gonna only do just a small amount but I want you to get the the general idea of how I did this so I just started making random and I'm not gonna make too many because we don't have that big of a paper 
but I just made random <clears throat> marks on my paper and it was okay if they bled through a little bit. We'll use the Wisteria Wonder. And then the eggplants. And I always take the wrong end off because I'm in a hurry and I don't pay attention to which end I have in my hand that I'm going to be opening. Okay, so you get the general idea. This is pretty much all you do. You just keep randomly mixing your colors all together. Then this is where your spritzer comes in. You just spritz a little bit. It doesn't take too much, but you do want it to, to bubble up there like... I don't know, can you guys see that? You want it to bubble up a little bit like it is. Let me show you. You don't want it real runny, but... And then you simply take your cardstock and just lay it on there. And this is another one of those. And you can use watercolor paper. I just chose not to. I just chose to use regular cardstock. I dried it with the heat tool and then laid something flat on it so it wouldn't curl up. So there you get the idea of what you're going to, the end result. And it's going to be better, like I told you, with mine. You know, I used a bigger piece, but you can see how the colors run together. And then what we do, I forgot to mention too, you're going to need your Versamark. And the stamps that I used, the first one was the, the flower. And you really can't see where you're stamping at because it's, because you're using the Versamark. But I'm going to dry this really quick so I'm going to pause the video while I dry this piece of paper so we can move on. You guys I have it pretty much dried enough dried so we can move on but as you can see you get a really neat effect and if it would have been more a bigger piece of paper and I would have had more colors you know I would have filled in these two spots and it would have ran and looked a lot better but for video purposes we're just I'm just trying to do it quickly so you can get the idea. So you take your verse mark and you're going to stamp up the flower and then you just randomly and make sure that you're turning the flower because you want it, you don't want them to all be going in the same direction. And since this is such a small piece, I'm just going to say that that's probably good enough for that. And then we need our silver embossing powder. Okay, then I also used in the same stamp set, the, the one with the little dots on the top of it, grab my verse mark again. And if you wanted to go back on, back in and put more of the, the swirled flowers, you for sure could do that. It's not too late to do it. And I'm just going to try to stick with, instead of worrying about getting it on the, the outside where I didn't even get any of the color on it, I'm just going to focus on the center there of getting the inside of it where we have color so that way you guys can just get an idea of what we're going for. Okay. Put the lid back on that and move the stuff out of the way before I have an accident. And then we're going to heat emboss this. I love heat embossing and you can see that it's starting to change. It's so neat. Isn't that so pretty? I've been doing a lot of heat embossing because I'm getting ready to go to the Stampin' Up! on stage convention in Utah. And so I'm making cards for my swap, and I decided to do some heat embossing. And I only have 100 cards I'm making to take with me to swap, so I've been busy. You see that? You can kind of see when you don't have a spot that you put the Versamark and the ink on that hasn't turned. Just hold your gun there a little bit, and 
It will all change. Okay, I think that's good. So that's pretty much how you do that. Can you guys see that? And then you just take your, the petite puddle punch, and then you can randomly just, I always do it upside down so I can see where I'm getting. But as you can see, when you pop those out, how pretty that is. Can you see that? Then we'll do another one over here where we're going to kind of pick up more just of the gray and the embossing. So pretty. I'm just going to go ahead and pop out my three right now since we're doing this. I'm going to do that one. And it's okay that you're getting a little bit of the white that didn't get it. So I'm just going to lay those off to the side so we can move on. So the next thing, what we want to do, got to get my stamps out of the way. Move those out of the way. The next thing we're going to do is get our Whisper White cardstock. Sorry, guys, I kind of have a whole lot going on here. So we're going to move this out of the way. So this is what we're, where we're going to actually do our stamping. Let me move the camera down just a little bit so you guys can see better. Okay, so we're going to start doing our stamping. We're going to first take our basic gray. And I believe I used this one first with that design on it. And then I just stamped it up and went along the bottom edge. And kind of went up the side. Okay, and then let me grab some of my stamp and mist so I can clean my my stamp off. And then we're going to use the stamp in the Elegant Eggplant. I'll leave that gray one open because we're going to use it in a minute. So I dipped it and stamped it in the Elegant Eggplant and I just kind of went over top of the one I just stamped but I just did it kind of like off. Kind of like that. Clean my stamp again and then I need to, I'm going to clean my, the flower one off because we just got done using it on the, the Versamark. So I don't want to get that on my stamp and scrub. So I'm just going to spray that, spritz that a little bit and clean that before we do our flower design. So we're gonna do it in the, the purple and you just do this randomly wherever you feel like. So I'm gonna do one there and then I kinda stamped off and did one in the opposite corner. Clean our stamp and then we're gonna do the same thing in the basic gray. Just stamp, get your stamp pad all inked up come in again and it's entirely up to you where and how many of these you use. I'm going to do just one an off one right there and then I do think I'm going to go back in with the purple the elegant eggplant and do one there and then just maybe an off one there on the side. Okay so that's basically that for the Whisper White. And I'm going to lay that to the side, clean up my mess really quick. Now for our banner, we heat embossed that. So I think we're done with our ink pads. We'll just close those up to get them out of our way. So this, now we need our scrap piece of elegant eggplant. And I can't find, oh here it is. Moved it over here out of the way, guys. So we're going to take that. We're going to grab... Let me put this stamp set out of the way. I feel like I have too much in my way right now and I can't find what, I'm, what I need at any given moment. So we're going to use the Forever Friends. I'm going to grab my block. 
And so, put that on there. We need our verse mark again. Oops. Grabbed the wrong one. I could be in trouble doing that. So we just ink that up really, really well. And then we're going to stamp it. Grab our, let me grab my spoon really quick. I think you're ready every time you set up for one of these and you realize that, oh no, I forgot this. Oh no, I forgot this. So just put our powder on there. Flick it off and then turn the heat gun on again. And there it goes, there's the magic. I just love heat embossing so pretty and what I did with this I just cut it down to whatever width I wanted and I'm going to go to my um, trimmer and I'll be right back after I get that done okay I got that all trimmed up I'm going to take my paper snips and I just cut in just a little bit and snip that off to make my banner and do the same thing on this end Kind of eyeball it and go in the center and then you just cut each corner and it doesn't matter like that one didn't turn out that straight but that doesn't matter it's fine it's a handmade card they're not all going to be the same and they're not all going to be perfect so now we're going to go ahead and get started on our leaves and we're going to use just the vine in the botanical blossoms or blooms and here's the paper I was using yesterday when I did it let me grab a small mounting pad okay there's my block and then I believe I used for this one garden green so I already have one that I did yesterday but I ended up not using so we're only going to have to do like two more I'm going to run this to the big shot and use the, the thinlet to cut that out. And it is the little bitty one. This one is the one I'm going to use. I'm going to run that to the big shot, cut those out, and I will be right back. Die on the big shot. The next thing I'm going to do is we're going to apply the washi tape. And I just, you just kind of eyeball it where you want it to go, how far down you want it, and I think maybe right about there is fine. Just fold it across the back. Put that one across the back. That's as easy as that is. Then we're going to pop up the sentiment with dimensionals. And I use three. And I put my sentiment when I put the tag on. I kind of like put it because I, I still wanted you to be able to see a lot of the washi tape. So I just kind of put it on there like that. I'm going to bring in our three flowers. And I used glue dots the flowers. I've kind of noticed that the theme of the cards, the color of the cards, used, usually match my nails. I just got my nails done. In the last couple of weeks I was doing like blue and yellow colors and that's the happened to be the color of the fingernail polish I had on. I don't know if there's a power of suggestion in that. I think what I'm going to do Next, before I go any further with the flowers, and then when we get them all on, we'll go around and raise these up. 
but I think I'm going to, because I learned my lesson on when I made the first card, I didn't do this step first and regretted it. It still worked out okay, but it'd just be easier. Put just a little bit of snail. I'm not sure if that, yeah, it did. For our metallic thread. And that just makes it easier. And I don't know if you guys watched one of my videos where I showed you the little, I take a little snippet of the dimensionals, a piece that I'm not going to use. And that's how I keep it from going crazy on me. And then grab my snips really quick to cut that off. And then it just makes it so much easier when you're, and then just kind of push down and it'll stick it right there for you. And then I just take the thread and I usually try to bring double it up bring both ends pretty much as close together as what you can get them and you could even triple it if you wanted to and then I just put a little piece down where we put the snail to hold it all in place and then the snail really doesn't show up so you can put it in another place to hold and that, that's what makes it really nice. Then you can kind of move it around and keep putting it and positioning it where you'd like it. And it holds it in place for you. And I think I'm going to just bring this one back up and twist it down right there. Can you guys see that? And then I'll show you here in a minute that we can, I'm just going to snip off if there's any that are wild and I don't like. But with when we put the other flowers on there too, that's going to help also secure that to hold that down. So I'm just using the glue dots on the back of the flowers. And then you can kind of lift up on the leaves now if you want to, or I'm sorry, the petals if you want to. I kind of did it at the end once I got them all placed where I wanted them. And see that kind of helps. To, to secure that in place and I took my bone folder and just kind of went around you can take your thumb but if you don't have thumbnails you can use your snips to kind of bend your your flower petals up just a little bit gives them a little bit of dimension that way okay I'm gonna cut that one that's right there in my way and then for our leaves, we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to use a grab a glue dot. And then you can position those. Make sure you guys can see that. And we're almost done with this card. Put that one right there. You could even bend the leaves up if you wanted to on that. I don't particularly want to, but I mean, it's up to you if that's what you wanted to do. It's your card, right? You can do what you want. Now we're going to put our, bring in our jewel rhinestones. And I use my snips to pick these up. Place it in the middle and hold it down with your finger. I just love the effect. Oops, that one came back off. I just love the effect of the using the markers to create your own um, design on your on your. I'm going to use my bone folder to do that because I think my, there we go, to get the, your design for your paper. And then you, you have all of that left over, like you've seen the big piece of paper that I have left over that I can use on other projects. So now all we have to do is assemble our card. So we're going to bring in our piece of basic gray and elegant eggplant and our snail. Layer that on top of the basic gray. Just 
just kind of be gentle when you're going over your your flowers there then take and layer that up okay guys there you go that is how quick and easy it is to make this card if you have any questions just leave a question in the comment and I'll answer you as quickly as I can and if you want more information I'll have a video up later tonight probably with the supply list on my blog and I'll put this video up um, just as soon as I get back home from work <laughs> I'm headed back from lunch actually but make sure that you visit my my blog and make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos um, neat ideas. I've got a couple of, of neat things that I'm going to be trying later on in the week and hopefully they'll turn out and I can post a video of that as well. But my blog is bobbystamps.blogspot.com. Thanks guys so much for stopping by.